Hi there. In this video, we are going to prove the weak law of large numbers, but in a opposition to what we did before, we're going to do this using characteristic functions. And I wanted to provide this second proof just for completeness, and it sort of provides another insight into the usefulness of characteristic functions. So just remembering what we found in the last video, we defined the characteristic function of some random variable x as a function of some parameter t, as being defined as the expectation of e to the i t x, where i is the sort of normal form of i in the sense that we mean it is the square root of minus one. Okay, so that was the definition of the characteristic function of some random variable x, but then we went on to prove a, another couple of properties of characteristic functions, namely that the characteristic function of some random variable x one plus some other random variable x2, if x1 and x2 are independent, then this is just defined as, the, or you can be shown to be actually equal to the product of the individual characteristic functions. And finally, the sort of last property which we found for a characteristic function was that the characteristic function of, let's say some random variable x divided by n as a function of t, is just equivalent to the characteristic function of a random variable x as a function of t over n. And that just came about because of the fact that we multiply t and x together in this sort of exponent here. Okay, so what else do we need to be able to proceed with this proof? Well, one of the things we need to be able to do is we need to actually expand our characteristic function in terms of a Maclaurin series. And in doing so, that's going to provide some insight into the usefulness of characteristic functions. So we can expand e to the i t x, sort of forgetting about this sort of expectation term which I have up here to begin with, in a sort of Maclaurin series or a Taylor story series which is expanded about zero. It's just equal to one plus, or actually let's not use that color, let's uh, use so that's one plus i t x plus i t x all squared divided by two factorial plus we could sort of continue on it would be sort of i t x all cubed divided by three factorial but we can sort of write this compactly and completely um, accurately by sort of writing this as one plus i t x plus terms of order t okay so this is our sort of series expansion of e to the i t x what happens then when I take the, exp uh, the expectation of both sides? So the expectation of the left-hand side is just going to be equal to the expectation of the right-hand side. But the expectations operator is a linear operator, so it just operates on each of these individual terms in the Maclaurin series in turn. So the first, the expectation of just 1 is just 1, it's just a constant. The second term, I, the sort of variables i and t are just, they're not variable at all actually, i is just a constant and t we're just regarding as being constant for our purposes here. So we just get i t mu for the second term because the expectation of some random variable x is just defined as being its mean, mu. And then we get some sort of other terms which we say just order t. Okay, so that's the Maclaurin series expansion of characteristic functions. How can we then use this coupled with our other properties to prove the weak law of large numbers? Well, let's just first of all think about what we're doing here. The idea is that we're trying to find the characteristic function of some sample mean x bar n, which is just defined as 1 over n times the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi. So we're trying to find the characteristic function of x bar n, and what we're hoping is that as n tends to infinity, the characteristic function of our sample mean should settle down to something which looks just like a constant. So it just should just be constant at the population mean mu. Okay, so I can write this sample mean another way. I'm just gonna write it as the sum from i equals one to n of xi divided by n. And I'm absolutely fine to do that because this n has no sort of subscript of um, summation. So I'm absolutely fine to do that. Okay, so let's use all this information and try and get something useful out. 
So the idea is that we are trying to find the characteristic function of our sample mean x bar. And it's always, we always define characteristic functions in terms of this sort of parameter t. Um, but because of the fact that we have a sort of sum here of independent random variables, then we can actually write this as a product from i equals 1 to n of the characteristic function of each individual xi divided by n as a function of t. And that just follows because we've assumed independence of our xi. Okay, and then we can use this property up here to write this term here slightly differently. So, sort of continuing on the next line, we can write this as the product from i equals 1 to n of the phi of um, xi as a function of t over n. And, of course, each of these xi's are, are we're sort of defining as a random sample. They're all coming from the same population. So we can just write this as the product or, or the individual um, characteristic function of some random variable x as a function of t over n, all to the power n. And if we use our Maclaurin series expansion of our characteristic function, we can just write this as equal to 1 plus i t mu divided by n plus stuff which is order t over n. And we're sort of taking all this to the power n. Okay, so this nasty stuff which I've got down here in the bottom right hand side of the um, screen, this actually turns out to be the definition if we let n tends to infinity then this stuff down at the bottom here is actually equivalent to e to the i t mu. That is actually the way in which we define the exponential function. So, and so we found that in the limit that x uh, in the sample size tends to infinity, our characteristic function of x bar, oh, let me just rewrite that, the characteristic function of x bar as a function of t is tends to e to the i t mu. And it turns out that this is actually the characteristic function of a random variable which has, is just constant, and it's constant at value mu. And that's quite easy to see because if I was to just think about taking the, um, finding the characteristic function, instead of finding it of x, finding it of just mu, then I would just sort of get here it mu replacing my itx. And because this doesn't have any sort of form of, um, this doesn't have any x in it, I can actually take that outside my integral when I use the law of un the unconscious statistician. So it just turns out that the characteristic function of my random, my random variable, which is constant at mu, is just this value because the integral which we get left over here is just the integral over the probability, which is just equal to one. So this is, because we prove that the characteristic function of the sample mean x bar tends in, in value to e to the i t mu as n tends to infinity. Because of the fact that I've sort of said that characteristic functions and random variables have a sort of one-to-one -one mapping, it turns out that because we proved that a particular variable has a given characteristic function, then that characteristic function must represent that particular random variable. And in this case, our random variable is just a constant at the population mean mu. So another way of sort of stating this is we've said that as our sample size tends to infinity, our sample mean x bar tends to the random variable mu, or it tends in value to, or it tends in probability to mu. So we have just proved the weak law of large numbers, but we've done it using characteristic functions.